So, in this video, which is a continuation of the one uh, you've seen before, which was the presentation, the introduction to the gem program, we are going to directly dive into an animation practice. Este es el video continuación del anterior que viste que dura unos 27 minutos, la introducción a los diferentes formatos y por supuesto el programa que en cuestión y vamos directamente a ir a por la práctica de animación. So, the first thing to bear in mind is that in an animation, in a GIF animation as such, we are going to uh, turn the frames into layers as you can see here. Lo importante es que entendamos que en una animación GIF, concretamente en este tipo de, de, de programa, en GIMP, los fotogramas, cada una de las imágenes que van a ser eh, reproducidas delante de nuestros ojos, se convierten en capas. So, if I start, for instance, in this particular example, I start making these layers invisible, and then visible again, you're going to understand pretty well what this is all about, okay? So, anyways, we are not going to work with a given example, we are going to do our own animation, and it's going to be very simple. So, therefore, I'm going to close this example, I don't need it anymore, and from this moment on, I wish you start following my guide. A partir de este momento, es conveniente que si estáis delante del ordenador, empecéis a seguir mis instrucciones. The good thing about videos, you can stop, you can go back, you can make me repeat whatever I say over and over again. Como natural, lo bueno del video es que podéis pararme, podéis mm, eh, hacer que vuelva hacia atrás y que os repita, eso sí, lo mismo una y otra vez. So, we're going to start by creating a new, as you can see, file new and in this case we are going to an image size we are going to create an image which is going to be rather small 250 pixels by 250 pixels what does it mean we are going to create our own square as you can see right now this is a square good and now what I do intend is to do a jumping ball and it's going to be as I told you very simple we are going to draw with the mouse the ball and in order to do so we are going to take as you can see here the paintbrush which is the brush here vamos a hacer una animación de una pelotita saltando arriba y abajo vale entonces vamos a coger nuestro pincel as you can see here these are the um, properties attached to that tool. Aquí tenemos las propiedades eh, de, esa, de esta herramienta. As you can see here, we can either do it bigger or smaller. For instance, if I do it bigger, you see, the circle becomes bigger. If I do it smaller, the circle is going to become smaller. Anyways, you have to make sure here on the color, which is this rectangle here, if you do double click on it, you will be able to change the color, as you can see here. Mm, by default, we are going to start working with a black color. So make sure that current rectangle is black. Vamos a usar este seleccionador, esta ventana, ¿vale? Y vamos a, por lo pronto, usar el color negro. Luego ya vosotros, evidentemente, vais a tener libertad para hacer lo que os dé la gana, como natural, pero de entrada, para que este ejercicio resulte estandarizado y todos aprendamos lo mismo a la misma velocidad, primero vamos a hacer todos lo mismo. Ok, so, ok. And now, here on the upper part of the image, we are going to draw very, very carefully. No, it doesn't matter if it is careful or not. We are going to draw a rounded potato or rounded thing or whatever this is. Ok, this is going to be, therefore, our frame number one. So, if this is going to be our first frame, we make sure that our correspondent layer is also called like this, that is, frame number one. Ya que mm, este va a ser nuestro fotograma número uno, vamos a ir aquí a las capas y vamos a hacer doble clic. We are going to double click on it, here on the name, and we're going to change the name, which is background, by just number one. Okay, so far, is it good? You see, nothing changed. This is good. Now, we're going to add a second layer, or 
a second frame if you want to. And we are going to get that by getting here on the bottom part, vamos aquí abajo, and we're going to add a new layer. Here, you have to be extremely careful on the following menu parameter. Aquí tenéis que tener mucho cuidado. ¿Vale? Aquí abajo, donde pone Fill With, by default, many of you are going to have transparency. Well, this is not the one, okay? That's not the one. We want the background color. Queremos tener precisamente el color de fondo. The background color, which in this case, as you can see, we have it the foreground, which is black, and the background, which is white. Aquí tenemos el color eh, de la figura, que es negro, y aquí el color de fondo, que es blanco. Bueno, queremos que por favor tenga el color eh, de, eh, de fondo, es decir, el blanco. And if we do that, we say OK, as you can see, and suddenly we have a new layer, which, for whatever reason, it's called number 8, which is absurd. Now, what am I going to do? I'm going to do double click. No, I'm going to double click here in order to change the number. Instead of 8, it's going to be number, guess what, number 2. Evidentemente, vamos a cambiarle el nombre, ¿vale? independientemente de lo que salga, de lo que salga para que tengamos las, eh, las capas perfectamente nombradas. Ahora bien, si este va a ser mi fotograma número 2 y quiero que la pelotita vaya cayendo, ¿vale? Mm, me gustaría evidentemente saber dónde estaba la pelotita originalmente. Hombre, puedo estar haciendo esto, es decir, puedo estar aquí uh, eh, haciéndolo visible o invisible y en un momento dado, pues sé que por ejemplo por aquí va a estar donde tengo que dibujar la siguiente pelota. Of course, I can do it visible or invisible by clicking here on the eye in order to draw the next step, but there is a so much more simpler way of doing this, which is using precisely this parameter. De una manera más fácil que es usar precisamente este parámetro que es el de la opacidad. Fijaos que cuando bajamos ligeramente la opacidad es como si estuviéramos usando una especie de papel cebolla. It is as if we were using a little onion paper. So, I uh, already can see perfectly well where the uh, previous layer is. So according to that, I am going to draw my new position, okay? And once I finished, I don't have to forget this, I need to get opacity back into 100%. Now, what comes next? Of course, a new layer. So, what's the layer name? It's going to be number three. I make sure I have background color and I say, okay, that's it. Now, what comes next? I draw the opacity down. I must make sure I always have selected the right layer. Tiro la opacidad para abajo. Compruebo siempre que tengo la capa oportuna seleccionada. Es decir, que no estoy ni en dos ni en uno. Estoy en tres, recordad. And yet, Oh, that's not that good enough. Remember, if you commit such a mistake like that, okay, control Z, you do control by Z. Now, again, let's try to do this. Well, not that good. Again, it's not that easy, isn't it, to draw with the mouse. Good. Now, we are going to repeat the same process. Don't forget to place opacity back to 100%. We are going to do this until our ball is smashed against the, the bottom and then it goes up again. So I'm going to do this as many times as necessary. See, this is going to be number four. From now on, I understand. Everybody already understands the mechanics of it. I'm going to try to do that mouse good enough. Go back into 100% new layer, that's going to be number 5, ok, again, let's go opacity back, new circle, opacity back into 100%, new layer, that's number 6, and here, from now on, we have to be a little bit careful, because when it comes to get smashed against the, the floor, we want the ball be deformed. That is number seven, for instance, here. I'm going to do the ball literally smashed against it. Okay, even a little bit flatter than that. Okay, you see the gravity literally 
crushing the ball and now up from this moment okay opacity back into 100% don't forget that one if you forget it doesn't really matter you can do that uh, opacity thing afterwards but try to be as disciplined as possible si se os olvida lo de la opacidad en un momento dado siempre podéis volver atrás y volver a poner al 100% no me importa decirle la cuestión es que seáis disciplinados so 8 and again we see good enough where the ball is and from this moment on we need to make the ball go up here we go and in fact the ball is even changing its position since it goes so quickly upwards that it is not rounded anymore it's not it becomes a little bit elliptic so it seems to be even more quick it seems to be faster if we do that so 11 where was it here it is almost finishing let me see 12 and finally it's going to start again where it ended and it ends where it starts uh, let me see something like this okay good so <clears throat> what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put to the test my animation how am I going to do that I'm going to play it by getting here into filters vamos a filtros animation claro que si sí, no puede ser de otra manera and now I get into playback and as you can see we have this new window and by clicking on play we have our bouncing ball and it is bouncing over and over again how is that isn't that magical I hope so now once we have finished this first beautiful animation in order to save it properly we are going to file and this is important listen guys we are not going to save it as such no we are going to export this is important everything that you want to export as a jpeg png a gif or whatever extension that doesn't have layers in, in itself has to be exported so I export I'm going to name it for instance bouncing ball okay and we go here vamos aquí abajo y vamos a seleccionar atención esto es importante tenemos que buscar gif vale si lo exportáis como cualquier otra extensión que no sea gif pues simple y llanamente la animación se perderá para siempre vale so we are going to export let's and here again very carefully aquí otra vez mucho cuidado by default GIMP doesn't export as an animation por defecto GIMP no te lo quiere exportar como animación se lo tienes que decir explícitamente you have to be very explicit here as an animation okay important as you can see I've checked loop forever what does it mean loop forever significa que es un constante bucle es un bucle constante delay between frames where unspecified is 100 milliseconds ¿qué significa esto? que entre fotograma y fotograma va a haber 100 milisegundos si aumentamos este número ¿vale? Eh, digamos que entre foto, fotograma y fotograma pasará más tiempo como es natural y la animación será más larga pero menos fluida si lo hacemos más corto la animación será más corta valga la redundancia pero a su vez más fluida vamos a dejarlo en 100 milisegundos que ya habéis visto en la animación previsualizada que es suficiente we are going to leave it as such 100 milliseconds is going to be good enough as you already saw on the um, playback animation so we're going to export it oh by the way where where am I exporting this this is important isn't it so I'm going to cancel 
and I'm going to see where I'm going to watch where I am exporting this thing here and I want to export it into images here with the rest of my uh, GIF uh, wiener docs good and once I've selected the file I make sure I have animated GIF I do export I check as an animation I have a look if loop forever is checked 100 milliseconds and now just only now when everything is said and done I say export which is nice which is dandy now where is my bouncing ball here as you can see I had another um, primitive example it is here so depending on your computer on your operative system if you do double click on it some of you are going to have directly the ball bouncing and you're going to get your animation but some of you possibly are not going to have this you're going to simply have a um, static ball so if you want to see your animation you will have to do right click on it open with and then you will have to select to choose any web browser for instance of course Firefox and here you have it here you can see perfectly well how web browsers are able to play very quickly very effectively these kinds of animations so my demand for you bien llegados a este punto si habéis sido capaces de terminarlo simplemente lo que quiero es que me enviéis vuestros gifs animados al correo donde ponga claramente vuestro nombre y vuestro grupo vale se puede llegar a hacer por parejas vale se puede hacer por parejas entiendo que es incluso probable que no todos vosotros dispongáis de un ordenador funcional en casa y es incluso hasta posible que os juntéis eh, algunos de vosotros en casa de alguien si es así me parece bien tengo inconveniente pero si habéis hecho el trabajo por parejas por favor dejad bien claro en el nombre vale le dais aquí a renombrar o a nombrar y ponéis el nombre y el grupo de cada uno de los integrantes de, del ejercicio en cuestión lo he dicho máximo dos personas si os juntáis tres personas bien pues dos por un lado y otra solipay por otro lado vale no puede ser que me entreguéis ejercicios que son bastante sencillos como podéis observar en grupos demasiado numerosos parejas a lo máximo me lo podéis enviar a lo largo fijaos a lo largo de la semana que viene vale o sea que tenéis tiempo de sobra evidentemente este ejercicio como tal el de la pelotita es el mínimo requerido si queréis a partir de este instante intentar hacer vuestra propia animación es decir no una pelotita sino cualquier otro tipo de animación en el que haya personajes gente hablando saltando haciendo cosas vale entonces serán muy bien recibidas y por supuesto mejorarán su evaluación en función de la originalidad y eh, el tamaño vale es decir mucho mejor una animación de 40 fotogramas que una de 10 de acuerdo como es natural a mayor eh, a mayor esfuerzo mayor nota so i hope the video has been at least entertaining for all of you and i hope you really enjoy having done your first GIF animation. We are going to see in the couple of days so many other techniques of animations. So I hope you well, I wish you well, and please stay safe.